Guys, welcome back to the channel, Racer X here. And today I wanna to talk to you a little bit about the brand new 2023 Corvette Z06. Uh, this thing is going to be an absolute monster. We've heard all the specs on this. We've heard lots of sound clips on it. It sounds absolutely amazing. And I, for one, am super, super excited about the brand new Z06. It is going to be an absolute monster and a blast to drive. But today I wanna to talk a little bit about some things that maybe we need to think about on the new Z06 that not everybody really is talking about. There may be a few things that we need to be wary of, a few things to just kind of keep in the back of our minds because of some of the other cars we've seen out there that maybe had a few problems. Today, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the new Z06 and maybe some things that I might just be looking out for. Just maybe a little bit, something we need to be wary of. It should be a pretty fun one. If you guys are new to my channel, do me a big favor, hit subscribe for me right down there in the corner. I would really appreciate it. Lots of great content coming your way this year. And here we go. So as we know, the new C8 Z06 is definitely one of the most highly anticipated vehicles of the upcoming model year for 2023. And there are a lot of reasons why. I, as I mentioned, am very, very excited. I've had a deposit down on this thing for forever. And I'm super, super excited about everything this thing is going to bring to the table. Obviously, the new engine is, is kind of at the forefront of what we're doing with naturally aspirated technology. I mean, this thing is dubbed the, uh, the LT6. And what a fantastic platform it is. 5.5 uh, liter flat plane crank V8 revs to the moon, 8,600 RPMs. This thing revs out. And uh, it is, it's going to make 670 naturally aspirated horsepower. So there's a lot to be excited with the new uh, Z06. And I tell you what, they did a little bit with the styling on the car. They made it a little bit wider. I mean, lots of fantastic things. As we know, this thing is, uh, is essentially directly out. This engine is directly out of their uh, C8R race car. So basically, this is a race engine that is engineered for the street. So what are the things that maybe we should think about that could go wrong with this new platform? As excited as I am, I do want to talk a little bit about maybe some things that uh, we just need to take another quick look at. Now, really the best comparison that we can get with Chevy's new LT6 is what we have from Ford. And my buddies over at Palm Beach Dino, those are the guys that actually tuned my Mustang. They put out a really good video uh, that talk about some of these points, at least to some degree, um, in terms of the comparison between the Voodoo, the 5.2 liter naturally aspirated flat plane crank V8 from Ford, and of course, this slightly bigger LT6 that uh, Chevrolet is putting out. But I do want to talk a little bit about the specs of these two and why they're similar, and maybe just talk a little bit about uh, you know some things that went wrong with the Voodoo that maybe might bleed over a little bit to the new Chevrolet engine. As we know, the Chevrolet engine, uh, that's a race engine versus a engine that was really made for the masses, not really hand-built or anything like that in the Voodoo. So 5.2 liters in the Voodoo versus 5.5 in the LT6. But out of only uh, 0.3 liters of displacement, you're getting another what, 140 horsepower. That is pretty significant. Also, uh, 75, 100 RPM is where the Voodoo makes its max horsepower. Then you look over at the Chevy and you're looking at 8,400 RPM in terms of where it makes max horsepower. That's another 900 uh, RPM that it takes to wind that thing out all the way to its maximum horsepower. That is turning a lot of revolutions. And peak torque on the Voodoo, 4750. Uh, peak torque on the new LT6 is 6300. You really have to wind this thing to get it way up in the power curve. Um, but we do have two flat plane crank V8s that we uh, obviously have a little bit of history on the Voodoo. So uh, what else can we be aware of talking about the LT6? A couple other differences of note that I don't want to sort of gloss over. Obviously, in the Voodoo, we do have a wet sump uh, system versus a dry sump in the new LT6. That is pretty cool. Uh, you do have a larger bore on the uh, LT6, but less stroke. So that's why you don't see a whole lot of difference in displacement, uh, but you really see the LT6 wind out. I mean, for those of you that have ever driven a GT350 or 350R, you realize just how much you can wind those cars out and how much fun they are to drive at high RPM. So you can only imagine what the new LT6 is going to be like. And the really cool thing about this new LT6, or at least one of the other really cool things and a difference is the fact that this has dual throttle bodies, which is really neat. So obviously, 
obviously, uh, if you have dual throttle bodies, it may move air slightly more efficiently. And uh, it is just kind of a, more of a new age design that you see. That You do see some, some dual throttle body stuff on some of the older cars as well. But I do believe this new LT6 is going to be uh, very technologically advanced, which I'm super excited about. Obviously, whenever you take cars uh, that are, are engines directly out of a race car, um, you do have some things to be aware of. But obviously, the technology is going to be cutting edge. So very exciting stuff there. Now, one of the things that I want to point out about the new LT6 is the fact that it has a solid valve train, which could probably be a really good thing as long as it is calibrated absolutely perfectly from the factory. If it's not, you may have additional problems. It's going to be pretty darn hard to fix. Completely different design than what you find in the Ford. And what that may actually turn out to be, and we'll just have to wait and see until people get the cars and they get some miles on them and we really, you know, put them through their paces and really see what this thing can do. Will that valve train be extremely noisy uh, with some mileage and some time on that engine? Obviously, you know, solid valve train, that tends to be kind of what happens with some of those things. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that uh, that's what's going to happen. As we know, Chevy's been doing a ton of testing on this thing. And the fact that they do use it for their race car means that, you know, they know performance wise what it can do. But in terms of just putting miles and miles like the masses are going to do on that engine. Um, now, the next thing I want to bring up is power under the curve. And I do realize we've not seen a, a, a torque curve or a power curve on the new LT6, but our buddies over at Palm Beach Dino, uh, they actually put together a pretty good uh, guesstimate of what they feel like that power curve will look like based on all the statistics we have seen. And what they were really kind of able to figure out is that under 5,500 RPM, really the, the power under the curve, uh, it's going to be really close, basically identical to what the Voodoo puts out in the Ford. And keep in mind, uh, you know, you can go out and buy one of those Shelbys, even though the car prices are out of control and just insane right now. Um, you could probably go out and buy one of those for in the, say, you know, mid 50 range, even with low miles, uh, or, you know, maybe slightly more, maybe 60, somewhere in there. But uh, if you have a well-equipped Z06, we can fully expect that vehicle to reach up in, well into the six figures uh, and um, who knows, maybe like 110 or if you put the Z07 package on it, which probably will not be a cheap package as well. Um, you're basically talking double the money for basically the same uh, horsepower under the curve. You really don't start to see that LT6 uh, pick up a lot of its power until really late in the curve. And uh, you got to have a lot of open road and, and some space to kind of take advantage of that. So I don't know, there's something to consider there. Now that kind of brings me to my next point, and uh, I think it's a big one, is because of the way the new Z06 is going to make power, um, is it really going to be usable for the average guy? I mean, if you really start to come in at 5,500 RPM and that's where the power starts to pick up, um, you got to have a lot of space to be able to do that. And being that uh, a lot of these guys are just going to drive these on public roads, Will you really be able to take advantage of everything the Z06 is capable of? I mean, is the average guy going to buy one of these and only use it at the track? And that's kind of what this thing is focused for. But um, will it really be that enjoyable to drive on the road, on the normal street with speed limits and all that kind of stuff where you can't drive it at 130, 150 miles an hour and rev the thing out to 8,500 RPM? Um it's kind of hard to say. Yes, like I said, gearing's probably going to help out a little bit, but um, will it really be that much fun, say, at lower RPM? Will it be that responsive? We'll just have to wait and see what happens. So another one of my kind of major things that I think about when it comes to uh, the new Z06 and comparing it to uh, the Voodoo that Ford produced is the fact that guys literally um, would spin the bearings out of the Voodoos. Now, I don't want to just sit there and say that, you know, all the Voodoos had problems and, uh, you know, this was just a, a huge problem with that offering from Ford and they just couldn't get it right. I, so I don't want to really overstate that. But what I do want to talk about is the fact that, yes, it was an issue with several of these cars. You see it all over the forums and things like that. And so it's a little bit worrisome when you talk about an engine that puts out even more horsepower is going to spin even faster and is really made, uh, you know, for a race car type engine. I mean, that's the thing with race car engines is they're not typically made to, to go, you know, 100,000 miles or 150,000 miles, um, you know, especially when people are driving them hard. It's just a lot of, you know, a lot of heat happening in that engine, um, you know, with the bearings, obviously, you know, increasing in size and decreasing in size with heat and heat cycles and things like that. Um, will the engine actually be able to hold up to that many RPMs and will there be some longevity there? That is another thing
thing that definitely comes to my mind. And then when you talk about guys that boosted the Voodoo and like the GT350, um, we did see a fair amount of failures because of the way that engine makes power and just, you know, how hard that thing has to rev. Um, so what's going to happen when people get a hold of this new um, LT6 engine and then start boosting it? Because obviously if I get one... I I don't know. I can't leave anything alone, right? Um, am I going to want to boost it? I don't know. But uh, at the end of the day, I mean, that's another thing that worries me just a little bit is then you start applying boost to it. That's even more heat. That's even more force in there, spinning everything just that much harder. And it's already spinning like crazy. So it may just be a terrible idea to even think about. But um, you know what? It's going to be happening out there. And it's definitely something to be cognizant of as well. And the last thing that I want to bring up is something that, uh, unfortunately, we as consumers can do little about. Well, I guess technically we could do something about it, but it probably won't because there's too many guys out there with more money <laughs> than sense, is the fact that uh, we're seeing uh, kind of historic markups on cars right now. It's just flat ridiculous. And uh, even on base C8 cars, we're still continuing to see gigantic markups on these things. Uh, I mean, just across the board. So you can imagine what dealers are going to do when they start getting a hold of the brand new Z06 that's in high demand, one of the hottest cars out there. The, the dealer markup on these is going to be absolutely insane. So y'all need to hide your kids, hide your wife, and hide your husband because they're raping everybody. So if you're going to want to get a hold of a brand new Z06 when they first come out, you have to be willing, uh, I mean, unless you can really, really find a good deal from someone and they will stick to their word and sell it to you at MSRP. Good luck with that, by the way. Uh, you are probably going to be paying out the nose uh, with dealer markup. It's very unfortunate, but it's what these dealerships do. And... Uh, uh, there's not a whole lot we as consumers can do about it because there are some of those out there uh, that uh, that will pay it. And uh, unfortunately, as long as those guys exist, uh, the vast majority of people that can't afford to pay it are kind of hooped. So at the end of the day, it is what it is. Dealer markup is the thing that's going to happen and continue to happen, especially uh, while the uh, car shortage is happening right now. It's just, that's part of what we have to deal with. So. Well, that is about it. I know that uh, some of these things may not be a big deal to a lot of you. It's just a couple of things that I wanted to just you know, have you guys be aware of with the new Z06. As I mentioned, I am super excited about this new car and I'm seeing a lot of buzz on the internet. I think everybody's very excited about it. It's going to be a fantastic thing. And I know Chevy's done a lot in terms of R&D on this to make sure that it's going to be a really solid offering for the performance enthusiasts out there, uh, including myself. So I definitely cannot wait to see what this thing has in store for us. Just a couple of little uh, nuggets, if you will, food for thought on maybe some things that not everybody he's talking about. Let me know what you think about this in the uh, comments down below, and I will catch you on the next one. So until then, Racer X.